We are into lesson seven of our course, and today we shall look at how the yin and yang create the ba gua or eight trigrams. That's right, in eating, the most important will be the ba gua, called the eight trigrams, and the 64 hexagrams, which are just combinations of ba gua. That means you combine two trigrams, you create a 6-9 hexagram. We all know that yin and yang, yin is stationary, yang is moving. So when 7,000 years ago, when Fu Si, he was observing nature, he needs to tell his followers, what should we do today? Is today a good weather or is today a bad weather? Understand that there were no written language, there were no drawings, no writing materials at all. What they were using is just stones, branches, stems on the ground, shoy, water, and all those things. They are all using natural things. Remember, no man-made things because there were no buildings at all. It's all natural. So he observed nature and realized that the nature is very interesting. There's always this sky, right? I'm sure you know what is sky, right? But some people will wonder, how do we draw the sky? So if you ask a child, how do you draw the sky? The child will tell you, oh, the sky is something like that, right? And then if you move further up or down, you realize there's another sky. There is, uh, there's actually more and more skies. There are actually so many skies, right? So how you draw the skies? At the end of the day, you will realize that the sky could also be something very curvy, right? And there are many, many lines. So Fu Si realized that he got no writing materials. He had to devise a simple way to draw the sky. So he decided that there's this thing called tree. Tree means limitless, right? Anything that is tree, that means there are more than tree. So I don't need to draw so many. That's a very simple system and method, right? It is very efficient. Like in our modern day, when we talk, we say etc. In our PowerPoint slide, we put three dots, right? That also means three means there are infinity. That is infinity. So he draw three lines. After he realized that uh to draw the sky, he draw three lines, but to make things simple, he has to straighten the line. So he straightened to three straight lines. So he called this the sky. So this sky is simply called the Tian. Some of you will ask, why don't he just call the sky Tian in Chinese, right? Why he call it Tian? Understand that Fu Si has to have a, a language that's not easily understood by the people not inside his tribe. So he has to use another term. Imagine we all look at the sky, we call Tian. And then uh, when he's teaching his followers, he needs to use a term that is not so well known. So he call it Tian. Nah? So Tian is simply referring to the sky. And it is made up of three solid unbroken lines. And we realize that the unbroken line is called yang, the two broken lines is called ying, as from our earlier slides, right? So when you have three strong yang lines, it's called tian. So I want everybody to remember this. The sky is something that's very strong, unbroken, right? The sky is never broken, correct? If anybody has seen a broken sky, please let me know. And the sky is limitless, so draw three lines to indicate it is limitless. So that is the Tian, very simple, right? So next is, how is the next Gua called the Kun being created? Again, Fu Si has to draw, and last time he looked at the ground, he realized that the ground is always broken, right? A lot of broken ground. It's true, when you look at the ground, it's never one straight. There, there are some holes there, there's a there's a drain and there's all kinds of things, right? So he would draw many, many broken lines. As just now, the Tian, he decided that we should just simplify them to three. So he would just draw three broken lines. The three broken lines are of the same length. But if you see, Andy, the way you draw is not straight length, the same length. Of course, I'm drawing very fast, right? But you need to understand the principle and not just get too fixated on the line CT. So you just make out of three broken lines. And that is actually called the ground. Or he called it the T or the ground. 
But we know this Fusi has another name for the ground or the tea, and he called it Kun. Kun is the name for the ground. So it just make up of three broken lines. In other words, three ink lines. Ladies and gentlemen, now you have the first two gua. First is make up of three solid unbroken lines. That's called the Tian. And the next number two is make up of three broken lines called the Kun. I want everybody to remember this because we are going to develop more and more of the other gua. But if you cannot understand these two, then it is good to review this video clip again many, many times. Once again, this is the Qian Gua. It's made up of three yang solid lines. It's called the Qian Gua. And the Kun is made up of three broken or in lines. It's that simple, ladies and gentlemen. Is there any some complication? So one is called Qian and one is called Kun. Right? Anybody don't understand this? Please uh, review and ask me questions in the Facebook Messenger. And we shall continue to the third and all the way to the eight trigrams. Next is how Fusi draw the river. How do you draw the river? You know, river is all very flowing, right? I think that's supposed to be the river, right? It's all flowing down. And when you look at the river, you realize that actually this part is actually not really moving. The sides are not moving. The center is moving, right? That's why it's called the river. If all the sides are moving, then it is not river, it's called flooding, right? So for example, when we draw, we'll be like this, this is the river bank, right? This is the river bank. And uh, inside here, you will have the water flowing, right? Water flowing, right? So from here, you know, Fusi will keep on simplifying his drawing and he will just say, well, the two sides are like that, very long, right? And then inside here, we have many dotted lines, right? This is the river flowing. Some of you will find this very familiar. Is it the same as the lane markings on my road? They are the same concept. Huh? They are the same concept. So after he draw this, he realized that uh, because just now, his drawing for the Tian and the Kun are all straight lines. right? So of course, he has to straighten the lines. So he has to... That's now he realized that actually all these are drawn this way, not this way, right? So he has to turn the drawing of the river into from here he actually has to turn them into the horizontal way right so fu si has to turn this into this to create the third gua for the river and the river of course we know in chinese it's called he sui right it's water and then it is actually not called he sui in fu si. Why is it called? So we know the third gua is the water and water he call it kan. Kan because kan is difficulty and this is the gua that we saw just now, right? The center line is the solid yang line. The two lines are the broken lines. So fu si wants to have a name that straight will tell you the attributes. So the sky is very strong. So use the term qian because qian means very strong. As for the earth, it's called kun because that actually describes the earth. As for the water, the word kan means dangerous. You need to tell it's dangerous because water is dangerous, right? In the river, water is very big. I know people in Singapore and small cities have never seen a river before. They only seen small canals and river is very big and very dangerous. Um, some of you will say, not true. I'm referring to 7,000 years ago when there was no, nothing, no construction, no river bank. So river was just keep flowing. It's very dangerous to stay at distance. So you call it Khan. As for the fire, it's similar. The fire is exact opposite of the Khan. It is made of three lines. The center line is the broken lines. The two solid lines are at the side. It's the exact opposite of the Khan Gua. Why is this so? Why you call it Li? Because you need to keep a distance away from the fire, right? 